Hello, this is Paul Duchenko, and this is the second tutorial on spatial cognition. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on early studies in psychology on, oh, essentially how rats solve mazes. The reason for this focus is because uh, in early studies, they used uh, rats as a model kind of organism, a simple organism, for studying basic principles of learning and memory. But essentially what they did is uh, find out about how uh, these animals navigated in their environments. The first published study using a rat on a maze was done by Williard Small at uh, Clark University. And he designed a maze that was based on the Hampton Court maze. This is a diagram of the uh, first maze that Small made, in published in 1901. And it was based, its outline was based on the Hampton Court maze, uh, which is found just outside London. And the task for the rat, this is a rat here in the middle, uh, was to go from the middle, the start, and find its way through this kind of labyrinth to the finish. This is a picture of the actual Hampton Court maze, uh, located in Windsor, outside of London. Uh, I went and visited one day, and I climbed up a tree to take this photo. And uh, it's a little bit hard to tell, but the maze is essentially a hedge, uh, a bush, and it's uh, well above your head, so it's hard to see when you're in the maze uh, what things look like outside. I went through the maze several times, and each time I got faster and did fewer dead ends. And um, the way I solved it in the end, it seemed like I, would, I was able to recognize uh, which way I should turn at certain junctions. An influential figure in the, these early studies on how animals solve mazes was John Watson. John Watson uh, was a psychologist, and he was interested in using experimental techniques to find out answers and find out how animals solved problems. And this doesn't sound radical to us, but it was kind of a break from the previous tradition in psychology where uh, humans would, uh, ref and highly trained humans, would reflect on the contents of their experience. Uh, Watson was dissatisfied with this type of psychology, and so he sought to make it more of an empirical science where there was like chemistry or biology where you did experiments that were could be replicated by others. One of the studies that Watson uh, published with his colleague Harvey Carr in 1908 uh, used the following maze. Uh, here the maze, the animal started at the base of the maze and found, went through uh, and finally found the food. Uh, the, animal, the animal were trained repeatedly on this um, and Watson was very interested in how the animals did this. And he found that they could do the maze in the darkness or if the animals uh, were unable to see. So it suggested to him that the animals had some kind of motor kinesthetic sense, that as they learned it in a s the maze in a series of sensory motor turns. One alteration they did was to remove a portion of the maze, this removable leaf, and shrink the maze. Uh, so it's just like your dining room table if you remove your a leaf there and shorten the table if you have fewer guests. They did the same with this maze and what they did when they did this, the animals would run the maze, um, but when they got to the now shortened alleyways, they would run into the wall. And this suggested then that the animals were learned, had kind of learned the distances of each of the alleyways. So for Watson, animals were able to solve the maze in kind of an automatic, uh, as an automatic series of uh, responses. Now, as a sli slight digression, uh, Watson published this influential book, Psychology from the Standpoint of a Behaviorist. Uh, and this founded the kind of, me uh, the movement of behaviorism in psychology. And Watson's idea, again, was a reaction to the, the current approach uh, of psychology, the approach then of introspection, this reflection on the contents of your experience. Again, by looking at behavior, something that could be measured and something that could be replicated. And he thought that for psychology to make progress, it should embrace behavior and not uh, focus on consciousness. John Watson had a very strong view that the environment was the chief determinant of an individual's behavior. He wrote the following, give me a dozen healthy infants, well formed in my own specified world to bring them up in, and I'll guarantee to take anyone at random and train him to become any type of specialist I might select doctor, lawyer, artist, merchant, chief, and yes, even beggarman and thief. Regardless of the talents, pensions, 
tendencies, abilities, vocations, and race of his ancestors. So in this view, anybody can become anything uh, depending on the environment. But to return to spatial cognition, these early studies on spatial, co uh, spatial cognition at the beginning of the 20th century uh, focused, uh, used rats as a way of uh, understanding basic principles of learning and memory. Uh, but what they also did was tell us a little bit about the spatial uh, strategies that animals use. Because so an animal solving a maze is a mammal solving a, 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 a spatial task. And so there are really three um, outcomes then, or conclusions from this work. First, animals use visual landmarks. Uh, that is, the, the uh, visual um, objects that they can see in the distance uh, serve to anchor the animal's orientation. As we talked about a little bit with the studies uh, of uh, John Watson and Karen Watson, uh, animals seem to learn the maze and be able to perform it even when there aren't visual landmarks. So they can use uh, a series of stimulus response associations, go left, go right, in a series and a sequence to solve the maze. And although I didn't mention this directly, uh, it appeared also that animals have a sense of direction. When Carr and Watson moved the, rotated the maze, they found that the animals were very disoriented. So the animals were not just losing um, a series of stimulus response associations and the uh, left-right turns within the maze. They somehow knew how the maze was situated in the room. <coughs> 